Well, you guys wanted to activate me really bad and guess what? I'm activated. This is another series of unpopular Taylor Swift opinions, only this time I'm going to be doing it while showing you my full, entire, convoluted, many-step skincare routine. I get a lot of questions asking me about, you know, the Swifty glow that I have going on, and it is finally time that I reveal to you exactly how I go about attaining that glow. And if you're interested in this video, make sure that you like it and subscribe to my channel because we do a lot of fun, thoughtful pop culture content here. If you're a Swifty, you're gonna fit right in, as long as you're not crazy. Check out my podcast, Evolution of a Snake. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash swiftologist, where you can get up to 15 episodes of the Evolution of a Snake per month. It's a crazy deal. You're missing out for sure. I don't know when this video is going to go up. So this was pre-filmed. Um, if there is, I don't know, any sort of shocking announcement, uh, maybe the, some of the opinions in this video will be outdated. But until then, we're just going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to let you rock. You're going to let me rock. And we're going to go through this together. Thank you again for 20,000 subscribers. Love that. My table is unbelievably chaotic right now and looking at all these products really does not inspire me about the length of this video i have a feeling it's gonna be pretty long so before i even put a single product on i don't do this every day i usually do it on the days that i'm filming or like three days maybe four days out of the week is I like to exercise the face muscles a little bit. But before I do that, I'm gonna put on some lip balm. This is my favorite one. It is from a company called Self Beauty. It is the Unicornic Goodnight Lip Mask, Cool Mint and Rosemary. And I got this in Korea and I could not find it anywhere online. But it is very similar in consistency and finish to the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, which I love. So in general, I would say that I have like a puffy face. I have dry skin and a puffy face. Those are like my two issues. If I have a little bit of sodium or I drink a little bit of alcohol, alcohol, I am going to be looking like I was stung by a tracker jacker in the Hunger Games. So to remedy that, I have experimented with a couple of different devices. And so I have recommendations for you. This is definitely not an essential step, but if you are looking to have like more clearly defined bone structure or like to bring out the definition in your face a little bit more, I would recommend this. A lot of the steps in my routine are kind of oriented more towards being on camera a lot, because especially when you film in high quality, like imperfections really, you know, they get magnified and I have to stare at my face all day when I'm editing my videos. So I like to make sure that, you know, I'm happy with the raw material. So the two devices that I've tried are the New Face and the HR by Metacube. And I'm currently using the HR by Metacube. I got this in Korea because my New Face died and I was very upset. So basically what the New Face is, it's a microcurrent facial device. So you do it in like tactical places along your jawline, on your cheekbones, on your forehead, and it just kind of snatches. You have to do it over a certain period of time to see results. I was really consistent with it and I love the results that I got. And this is definitely an upgrade. It it's about the same price, but it feels more luxurious. It's heavier. It uses a different kind of current. It's called EMS and you have to use a conductor gel. I use aloe vera. You can buy the branded gels, but you know, any old aloe vera or ultrasound gel will do. And you basically put the gel on your face to conduct the current so that it like lifts up and I love to do this. Now this one is more painful than the new face. It definitely like you'll see when I start doing it, it shocks your face, but I find this to be very effective and a step that I never miss in my skincare routine, especially when I'm going to be filming. If I'm looking in the viewfinder a lot, you'll have to forgive me because I don't have a mirror. So I need to see where I'm electrocuting myself. So I'm putting it on the slim mode for my jaw and I'm putting it at the maximum strength. You have to work up to this, but you know, I've been putting in the work. You'll see that your muscles kind of like twitch. Can you see that? It'll make my eye twitch too. Look at this. Do you see how it's like twitching my muscle? <laughs> okay, let's get into your unpopular opinions. We're not getting any more Taylor's versions or new music until after tour. Is that an unpopular opinion or is that just like a speculation? Um, I think that we may get a TV announcement on tour, whether or not it'll actually come out during the tour time, I don't know. I really cannot take myself seriously while my eye is like convulsing due to the current currently being conducted through my skin. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but I think that definitely we're not gonna be looking at a new record until after the album is done. I mean, new record is less likely because she would have to incorporate that somehow into the set list. And I have a feeling she's gonna be doing this tour for at least another year. So I would say original Taylor Swift music is not going to come anytime soon. We will definitely be having like some sort of news on her film career, sadly, and probably a Taylor's version announcement. 
speak now, obviously, is the one that she keeps fucking hinting at and refusing to do. But it's just TBD. We just have to wait and see. Ooh, this is a good one. We haven't had a good music video since Look What You Made Me Do. I'm trying to think, like, what has come out since Look What You Made Me Do. I just finished my Reputation video essay, and yes, I agree that in general, the visuals for that era were disappointing following Look What You Made Me Do. Did Lover have any good videos? No. <laughs> Did Folklore? I mean... I thought that the Cardigan music video was cute. The Willow music video was cute. The Midnight's music videos didn't really do it for me either. So maybe I'm gonna have to agree with that unpopular opinion that there hasn't been a good music video since Look What You Made Me Do. I wish she played the normal all too well and added some Speak Now and debut to the set list. I mean, this is the Eras tour, right? I originally also was kind of like, are we really gonna do all of All Too Well 10 and sacrifice, you know, getting another deep cut from Red? And like, it's so lore at this point, and it's one of those like Taylor Swift lores that really, you know, made it into the mainstream and impacted the whole world. And I think that there is something very um, miserable and magical about everybody screaming the lyrics to the convoluted 10 minute version all together at tour. It's kind of powerful and it really encapsulates the master's struggle and and also just reiterates the strength of Taylor's songwriting. So I'm kind of okay with it being there. Fans overhype Maroon. I appreciate the unique and strange production, but it's a skip for me. I don't know, you know how I feel about Maroon abstractly is that I really like it. And it is like on paper, the kind of Taylor Swift song that I would love, but there is something missing about it. Like it does feel like an incomplete thought. The metaphor just doesn't quite click like i don't really get what she means by so scarlet it was maroon it's not instantly clear and again i think that just kind of speaks to the fact that she was in a really transitional place in her relationship when she was writing this record which i think made her be a little bit more cagey and vague in her songwriting than she normally is and that's why certain songs like that just sound like run-on sentences but there are moments in maroon that i love and i think it would have really benefited from having a big tour moment like i don't think an acoustic version of maroon is going to slap the production elements of it are what make it kind of exciting. So I am kind of disappointed that it's not on the set list. Taylor's private jet use is the least of our worries climate wise. People need perspective. I don't think I've heard much of people banging on about the private plane stuff since the original discourse came up. And it's like, Taylor's private plane usage is only one part of why people like her, billionaires and millionaires, are destroying the planet. The, the, Private plane issue is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of um, unethical things that people that have wealth of that size do to this world. There is no way to be an ethical millionaire. So, I mean, it's true that I guess like, okay, she's not the main source of climate waste and pollution in this planet, but the Taylor Swift operation is huge. It involves a lot of production and manufacturing and merchandising, which are things that very negatively contribute to waste and other bad things in our society. So. I think it's fair to be calling Taylor out for all of this stuff. You can still love her and remember that she is, you know, a money hungry capitalist at the same time. Two things can be true. Taylor's public dating history may mean a man has to be super secure to date her. This is not an unpopular opinion. I think again, that that is just a fact. Every time I do these videos, I'm like surprised at what you guys think are opinions. I think you just wanna share your takes with me, which is totally all good. But yes, I think that Taylor absolutely needs to find a man that is secure in himself to date because you know, it would, it would be hard for anyone. I think even the most secure person in this world would really struggle to date someone like her and to constantly be overshadowed. Like we joke and we kiki about that, but like, that is not really a desirable way to live your life. Relationships should not be imbalanced like that. And unfortunately at this stage, like unless Taylor wants to make a sacrifice and deliberately be more private and less public the way she was before, it's just not tenable at all, unless you are explicitly okay with it. Also right now what I'm doing is I'm starting to tone my cheekbone. You drag it up, upward motions always, and then you hold and you let it shock. Um, you can definitely feel it. You can feel it contracting the muscles in your face, but I don't know if you'll be able to tell a difference. I can tell a difference, but that's just because I look at myself all the time. I look so crazy right now. August is bottom three on folklore easy. Oh, that is an unpopular opinion. Listen, I had my time hating on August. I've done it over and over again. The tour performance of it kind of did win me over a little bit. I just think that August is too long. Like it's a little bit too long for what it is. It's certainly overhyped. But bottom three on folklore, I'm trying to think. Folklore is like, the bar is quite high with that. That to me is like very nearly a skipless album with the exception of Epiphany. And I don't, yeah, I mean, I guess you could make the argument that it's in the bottom three, but that bottom three is still stronger than the bottom three of an album such as Lover or even Midnight's bloated albums that don't have as much thought 
and care put into them. Her first five albums are much better than her last five. I mean, honestly, I mean, there is a new Taylor that exists post reputation, even post 1989. And I don't think that it's fair to compare the old Taylor literally to the new Taylor because, you know, her missives in life, her inspirations, her muses, the stakes, the things she had to consider while writing music, the goalposts shifting. I think that they're so tricky to compare. I mean, it's easy to say that the original stuff that we all love, this is, I just look so crazy right now. It's easy to say that that stuff is like, I don't know, better, but I think it really depends. Like Taylor is maturing as an artist and like Folklore and Evermore, you know, I'm not like a Folklore Evermore stan, but like there is something to be said about the quality of the writing and the creative experimentation that she took with that record. I think that we're definitely heading into a more generative space now that will yield some really interesting projects. Uh, the first five is probably more concise and coherent and like easy to understand. I would say the, the other albums post 1989 are, much more diverse, a little bit more eclectic. So I think it's a matter of taste, to be honest. Okay, I'm gonna put my hair back now so that I can get the brows. This part is very painful. I don't really like <laughs> doing this, but um, I got a comment the other day asking if I had a brow lift after someone saw my picture of me with Taylor Swift at the secret sessions. And I was like, girl, no, I just, I don't know. I guess I was just like looking down in that picture. But if it does look like I've had a brow lift, then, you know, EMS, microcurrent, that is really what is to blame for that. Someone has said, speak now is not good. And I just want to ask you, like, are you okay? What's going on at home? Did something happen? Are you doing this on purpose? Do you hate me? I think this person is just trying to get a rise out of me. And you know what? I'm not biting. I'm doing my skincare. I'm trying to just live my best life. I'm not gonna rise to the fucking nonsense. Okay, Speak Now is not a good album. Then what's a good album in your estimation? Oh, is it Lover? Is Lover the good album compared to Speak Now? No, bitch, don't lie to yourself. Me saying I'm not gonna get activated and then getting activated. Fearless is a five out of 10 album. This is from the same person that said Speak Now is not good. And all I have to say is tell me that you joined the fandom in the last two years without telling me that you joined the fandom in the last two years. Saying that Fearless and Speak Now are bad is basically like being like, I'm not a Swifty and I don't entertain fake people on my channel. I won't accept it. Um, either you're trying to get at me or you actually have some sort of very serious brain damage. So I'm, I would need you to address that with your doctor. Uh, this is not the place for you to air your grievances. Um, yeah, God bless you on your journey. You clearly need to get well soon. The Iris tour seems to me to be her last tour for a while and she deserves to have that break. Yes, I agree with that. I mean, there have been so many instances in Taylor's career though, where I've been like, surely she's taking a break after this, like post folklore and evermore. When Loverfest was announced, and it was only a select few dates. There have been so many moments that we've been like, oh, she's gonna take a break now. But I think her breaking up with Joe is only like a very promising sign for things to come. But with regards to touring, I definitely do think she wants to scale it back. And I think that touring really prevents her from being able to do the more like creative experiments like Folklore and Evermore and Midnight's and just having the flexibility to do that. Touring is such a like rigorous schedule. I think it's not a sustainable thing for her to keep going forever and ever and ever. She will always tour, but definitely this is going to be her last tour for a while. I don't really see where tour is going to go after the era's tour because how is she going to incorporate old stuff with new stuff when she has set the bar for incorporating old stuff so high. I think the next tour is probably going to be something a little bit more experimental. I would love like a performance art, a Kate Bush kind of like production in like the West End or something like that, where she just performs new stuff from an experimental album or something like that. That would be super cool. Okay, so now we're lifted. Do we see a difference? I don't know. I do this all the time. So like whatever. Uh, up next, I'm going to do my kombucha gel bio mist. Um, I really pared back my skincare routine uh, like two years ago but during the pandemic because I was like, why am I wasting all this money on stuff? Skincare needs to just be efficacious. But I've gotten back into the whole like luxury pampering. I love to like take the moment with myself and do my skincare routine because it's fun. And also I just love buying stuff. <laughs> I don't really buy clothes. I'm not super into like designer items, but I would say my disposable income really does go to skincare a lot. And Korea, when I went to Korea, cause I went to Seoul about a month ago, that 
really brought me back into the fold of K-beauty. And K-beauty is the game changer to me. Uh, Asian skincare in general is just like so superior and it's also very functional, but cute too. Like look at this packaging for my kombucha mist. It makes me want to use it. Like I want, here I am again. I just can't, I can't get enough of the kombucha mist. When it comes to skincare, my whole philosophy is that I need to add moisture back in. I am very dry. I'm a reptilian. I need all the help I can get with retaining moisture in my skin. And I also use tretinoin, which is a version of vitamin A. It is the only, I guess, scientifically proven anti-aging skincare ingredient other than, you know, using your sunscreen and vitamin C. And I find that retinizing your skin is something that you should do as young as possible. And I also think that it helps control breakouts and it gives like an, an evenness to your complexion. Like I feel like I definitely have been brightened by retinol and also I think a lot of the times I get told I look very young. I was having a massage the other day and the masseur asked me if I was 16. <laughs> I was like, 16, girl. And then I went back another week and another masseur asked me if I was 18. And I was like, wow, either something really shady is going on here or you guys just think that I look young. And I think I do because I use retinol and I use sunscreen and I stay out of the sun in general. But that's my top tip to you. If you feel like you're in your mid twenties and you're worried about getting wrinkles or whatever, you need to get on tretinoin ASAP. There are different versions of it. You can look at different, adapalene, uh, my personal, preference is to just do the cream and I have worked my way up to 1% strength over time. There is a period of sensitization where you get like a little bit of dry skin. I didn't really go through that, but I definitely had a purge of acne and acne is not something that I struggle with a lot, but it usually happens when I am not eating good or when I gym and I don't wash my face right after. And this is a lesson that I've had to learn very recently. Um, I need to wash the sweat off of my face, especially because my hair sits on my face. I need to wash it off straight away. So for that and I don't have this on hand, but I use this in the evening when I've gone to the gym or whatever. I use the salicylic acid CeraVe cleanser. Love that for breakout control. I think if you have sensitive skin, that's another thing I should mention. I have very sensitive and very reactive skin. Tolerable to fragrance, but certain active ingredients really fuck with my uh, sensitivity. And I have like redness around my nose. I also have uh, psoriasis. So that's something else I have to consider controlling. Wow, I keep forgetting to mention all of my skin concerns. That's why I'm also so dry. But because of that, I try not to strip my skin with uh, benzoyl peroxide, which does work to kill pimples, but does bad things for the rest of my face. So I find that if I'm gonna use a strong active for acne control, it has to be a wash off. Like I can't be leaving it on. That's why I do the salicylic acid face cleanser, wash it off. After 1989, none of her songs sounded like instant classics. She's terrible at picking singles. Um, Look What You Made Me Do is literally an instant classic. The second it came out, the second she put the old Taylor can't come to the phone right now because she's dead, is an instant classic. Everybody remembers where they were when that happened. It's like 9-11, we all know. That is an instant classic, so I don't really know what you're talking about. Also, Antihero, I think, is becoming a classic as well. It's inescapable, it's an earworm, it's a song that I find myself just playing when I don't know what to play. It lingers in the back of your mind, and everybody knows it, which is the definition of like an iconic hit. So, negative, disagree. When it comes to adding moisture back into my skin, I like to do that with a layered approach. So, I just did the kombucha mist. Now, I'm gonna do the Laneige Cream Skin Refiner. There is a spray nozzle attachment to this that I have been meaning to get, but. I haven't gotten it yet, so I just apply. It's like a toning liquid. I apply that with my hands and just rub that all over. Something I'm very bad at is waiting in between steps for products to dry. I'm gonna do that by reacting to some more unpopular opinions. What else do we have here? The butterfly jeans were not the sleigh as she thought they were. Um, yes, they were, and your mom's a hoe. So that's what I have to say to that. I wish she would as a banger. This is just an opinion. This is not an unpopular opinion. Who is out here saying that I wish you would is not a banger? Uh, certainly not I. Definitely not I. Taylor has definitely pirated Lana's unreleased songs. That is so funny to me. Um, I don't think she needs to pirate them. I think that she has enough contacts in the music industry. I always wonder like with Jack, cause he works with so many other pop girls, does he send Taylor a link? to what's going on, just so she's abreast of what everyone else is making. And she is a Lana fan. I'm sure Lana herself would show it to Taylor if she asked, but I do wonder if Jack like plays stuff for Taylor while they're working together. I mean, if I were him, I would. If, imagine how messy that would be. Like you're in the middle of Taylor working on something and you show her that another pop girl is working on something else and seeing if there's any overlap, what's Taylor's reaction to hearing someone that's maybe doing something similar to something she's done before. There, Jack Antonoff is definitely a messy bitch that lives for drama. And 
we all know that is Taylor too. So I wonder like what goes on behind the scenes. What's going on at home? I need to know. If I was doing my nighttime skincare routine, I would go in with this Royal Honey Propolis extract from Skin Food. And this is an ampoule, I think. It is very, very thick, glutinous, uh, but very watery as well. It's like an intense hyaluronic acid with propolis in it, which is one of my favorite ingredients right now for hydration, especially for a multi-layered approach. I do live in the tropics as well, so I deal with a lot of humidity, therefore I'm sweating a lot. So while my skin is dry and I need to keep it hydrated, I can't clog it up, otherwise I will get pimples. So the layered approach to hydration again works. This only at nighttime. In the daytime instead, I use this Bifida Biome Complex Ampoule, and it's just like a mix of different like hyaluronic acids and other things that are good for your face, B5, uh, from a brand called Manyo, which I do think that you can get on line and I like this because I don't use a moisturizer in the daytime so it is nice to just have that little bit of hydration insurance and I've definitely noticed since I started this light layer approach that the redness around my nose which is something that I deal with quite a lot um, because of my psoriasis and also any sort of like razor burn from shaving has really relaxed so I recommend that product a lot. Taylor should never ever ever play at the Super Bowl. I'm curious to know like I'm gonna need an expansion on why you think that because I can kind of see the argument that she shouldn't play the Super Bowl because it would just bring a lot of focus and attention back onto her but again uh, I think that's kind of inescapable. We're kind of past the point of no return in that regard when it comes to Taylor's notoriety. So I think that her catalog is so giant and massive and the Eras Tour has been such a moment of public fondness and nostalgia for her that next year really would be the right time to do the Super Bowl. I wonder why she keeps saying no. I think she said no this time because she hadn't embarked upon the Eras Tour yet and she wanted to save a lot of like the surprises and the gags for the opening night. But I don't know if it's like her partnership with Diet Coke because the Super Bowl is sponsored by Pepsi, if that's even still ongoing, if that's a consideration. I know that they don't pay the Super Bowl performers, so maybe that's what it is. I would love to see her do that though because I think having her do medleys is really interesting. I didn't like her AMA's medley that much. I mean, it was fine, but it just didn't give what it needed to give for the moment of her being the artist of the decade. She looks down on albums that don't do well award-wise, and this is a major personal issue. That is a super interesting opinion that I'm going to mull over as I introduce you to the next step in my routine. So the major product that if you're gonna take away a couple of things, if you're looking for glow, I get a lot of people asking, how do you get so glowy? This is the product that you need to get. It is from Beauty of Joseon. Uh, it is a Korean brand, and this is the Glow Serum. It is propolis and niacinamide. The niacinamide helps me with the redness, and the propolis, again, I, it, I just showed it to you. It's in that like heavier essence that I have. It's super hydrating, and it gives you that glow. And when I put it on, you're gonna see what I mean. And then in the evening, also from Beauty of Joseon, I use the Calming Serum, which is green tea and panthenol. And again, I haven't really noticed a specific difference from using this, but as you can tell, I like my steps. I like the process. Now, Taylor not liking certain albums because they don't do well. I think that this is true now more than ever, as she's mentioned, you know, about lover and reputation. Red really had to um, be reappraised by the general public in order for Taylor to even start caring about it ever again, because until Taylor's version returned and she decided that she was really going to capitalize on the all too well mythology. I think that she really um, moved on too fast from Red or viewed it as a personal failure and it led her to try and make force albums to be more cohesive uh, in a rather unnatural way. Obviously that sonic cohesion came through so well on 1989, but it didn't come through so well on, you know, an album like Lover, which I think she was trying to make it sound like a specific thing and it just kind of didn't work. I like it when she's more free with her artistic stylistic experimentations. That's, that's something that I do like about Midnight's is that there is a variation in sound throughout, though there is some sort of like sonic palette that is followed by all the songs. I just think that, you know, like any person, she responds to the, you know, or bodies of governance that tell you whether you're doing a good job or not. For all of us, we're like that, you know, at school, if you write an essay and you get like a B or a C rather than an essay where you got an A, what are you going to think is better, right? Like Taylor really doesn't, I don't, I don't think, look to the fans for validation of whether something is good because deep down she knows that they're going to love whatever it is, which is why she feels emboldened to put out songs like me. But... I think that the critical reception and the awards and acclaim thing, she said it before, she lives for the applause, she's still on that tightrope, trying everything to keep you looking at her. 
And I think watching that video of her saying that she was just going to make a better album than Reputation, look what happened after that. <laughs> Being motivated by trying to make a better album than the one before is not really the way to be, I think, a successful experimental artist. I think she's definitely shifted after Lover into, let me do something different and let me do what I feel like doing in this moment, which is why I think that Midnight's is more organic than Lover and why I still think Lover is worse than Midnight's because I think Midnight's at least came from a space of her being like, fuck it, let's try some new shit. I'm going to work with some new producers. She definitely is branching out again. And Midnight's is a transitional album. Whatever's going to be next, I think is going to be very interesting and telling of the story and the future to come. Okay, so now we're going to get into the final steps of my morning skincare routine. So that would be sunscreen, super goop, unseen sunscreen. I am dying to get my hands on the Trader Joe's $8 dupe of this because in Singapore, this is like 55 bucks. And I find myself using it sparingly because it's expensive. And the whole point of sunscreen is you wear it every day. I sit in front of this big window with all this UV light coming in at me. I should wear sunscreen more often than I do, but sunscreens, again, I have very reactive, sensitive skin. It gets irritated. If anybody knows of anything that's like the unseen sunscreen, it has that kind of like sink right into your skin, doesn't sting your eyes, doesn't leave like a really oily glow. Um, I prefer to get my glow from the products rather than the sunscreen because it doesn't irritate my skin so much. I've tried so many different sunscreens. Asian sunscreens don't really work for me. They're too, I think, fragranced or chemically. I need to know there is an ingredient in this. I saw Dr. Dre mentioned it, but the only other one that I can find that's comparable to this is Trader Joe's. And I live in Singapore. There is no Trader Joe's here, but I am going to the States this summer. So I'm going to pick up as many as I can. So if I was going out, I would put this on. If I was filming, which I am going to do now, then I need to add a little bit more glow glow. And speaking of glow, after the glow drops, this is the best product that I have ever used. It has been in my rotation for like seven years and it will be in my rotation forever. It is a French pharmacy staple. It is called Embryolise La Creme Concentrée. And Pat McGraw uses this as a base as a makeup artist. I used to read this blog called Into the Gloss, which was the Glossier editorial blog. And they wrote, you know, wonders about this. It is fragranced. Uh, but I find that it doesn't irritate me at all. There's a fragrance free version and a lighter version too, but nothing works the way that the original version works. And this is a brand new bottle, so excited. So it's just like a, it gives the most beautiful, lightweight, glowy surface. And I, if I was traveling and I didn't have a lot of space to bring something, I would just bring this and use this as my main moisturizer because it is hydrating while also being like glowy and giving you that nice kind of base for anything that you want to put on over it. And in general, I don't really wear makeup on like a day-to-day -day basis, but I learned how to do it nicely or in a natural way for filming because again, I'm shooting in 1080p, I'm shooting in 4K. Sometimes I got a pimple, sometimes I'm really tired. I want to, you know, be looking presentable. So this is the nicest base ever. Like it just gives you such a nice glow. There are a lot of times actually you'll see in my videos where I'm just wearing this and maybe a little bit of like blush and then that's it. That's, I just want to add a little bit of color into my face because I'm also very pale in case you haven't noticed got that Irish skin. Voila, that's the skincare routine. I've got no makeup or anything on. This is just all of the products that I showed you and I love that. I'm going to show you what I do at nighttime or when I'm having a little bit more problem with my sensitive skin, but let's do an unpopular opinion before I do that. So It Goes is the best song on her worst album, Reputation. Uh, well, I feel slapped and also hugged by this response. I feel slapped because Reputation is not even close to being her worst album. And I feel hugged because So It Goes is underrated and it's an iconic song. Uh, Reputation is a great album. It's slipped into my top three lately. Currently, the rotation is the preference, the order of preference, the order of excellence in the Swiftologist's estimation is Red, Speak Now, Reputation. And you know, Reputation might just take over once I go through my phase of getting Speak Now TV to come out right now, because I do go through phases with Speak Now and I've lived with it for so long. It's kind of like fearless, like it does kind of slip up and down my rankings, but Reputation is amazing. I don't know what you're on about. How can you say that Reputation is her worst album when Lover exists? I just don't accept any other answer than that. Okay, so some fun to have add-ons that I do from time to time. The Glossier Moisturizing Moon Mask. I love this. When my skin is really irritated and also dry, and even when I have pimples, I've noticed, you can use this as an overnight mask too. I use this for 20 minutes. You just spray a little bit of like water or you know kombucha mist on your face and then put this on and it's super nice. They also have a Galaxy Greens mask, which is a clay mask that I hate. Do not get that. It made me break out so bad. Gave me like a burn on my skin. It was horrible. I hated it. In the nighttime, I will usually add a little bit of a heavier hydration or a lighter hydration than the Embryo Lease. I have kept that kind of like as a daytime solution and a makeup primer for now, but I do love the Advanced 92 Snail Mucin All-in-One Cream. This is the perfect 
moisturizer if you live in the tropics. It has the perfect amount of humectant to give you the moisture that you need, but it doesn't have anything that's going to clog your pores. So if you have oily skin and you live in a very sweaty climate, you will love this. And I think if you do the layered approach, you don't need to use a cream on top of this. But that's just my opinion. If you live in like a colder climate, this definitely wouldn't cut it. But for the summertime, I know a lot of people are like, what the fuck moisturizer do I use? Because it's hot, so you don't want to put stuff on your face. Um, I live in permanent summer and I put all of this on. But as you can see, I do it in layers. So it doesn't feel like a lot of product on at once and they're all pretty like watery. La Roche-Posay's Sisaplast Balm is amazing if you have psoriasis. Um, sometimes when my skin gets so sensitive, I cannot be doing all of these steps and fussing around with my skin. So the only thing that I will do is splash my face with water and put this all over my face or just in the problem areas. So good for psoriasis, so good for contact dermatitis. Um, I use it around here and on my hairline if I ever get any psoriasis up there, which is where I tend to get it. She needs to change the lyrics in the Better Than Revenge re-record or apologize to Camila Bell. The, we're talking about ancient history. We're talking about the fall of Rome. They were very young. If this was Katy Perry, I would say apologize because Taylor was like fully grown. Um, but Taylor was like, what, 18, 19, 20 when she made Better Than Revenge? I think an apology would draw more attention to it than maybe would be, you know, preferable for Camila at this. Camille or Camila? I don't care. She's nothing. Um, but, you know, she deserves an apology theoretically, but I don't think that it's required for Taylor to do a re recording of Better Than Revenge. And Changing the lyrics is absolutely blasphemous and should definitely not happen. And Taylor, if you ever happen to be listening to this video, ignore this person's unpopular opinion. They're not well. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the light makeup that I put on for my videos because I'm gonna be filming a lot today. So I'll show you the steps that I go through. I do everything with my fingers, very small, minimal interventions. Less is more for sure, always, especially when you're on camera because again, picks up all the details. So you wanna make sure that everything is nice and like blended in and seamless and that you have the right shades and everything. Because if you don't then it can look kind of weird there are definitely some videos where i look back and i'm like mm, you did too much okay so the first order of business is to do something about my dark circles i have deep hollows here and very very dark under eyes so i need to look alive <laughs> look awake and to do that i use the pixie under eye brightener and then my holy grail product that i will never be without the glossier stretch concealer this is so old that in fact it is in the old shade name um look up when they change the shade names and you'll be shocked by how long i've had this for but again i like a light touch i really want it to look natural and i just want to look more awake and more defined i suppose those are the two goals and I just use my fingers because I'm lazy. Yes, I dip my fingers into the paw. I am not using a mirror so I could look crazy. Sometimes I'll just stop at the under eye corrector if I'm having a good day. Today looks like kind of a good day, but just for the sake of the video, I'll put a little bit of the stretch concealer on. I like this because it's really hard to overdo it. It's super thin. It doesn't move around a lot. And I think it's like multi-purpose. Sometimes I'll take a little bit here too. Um, but I try not to do that because my skin is so dry that whatever I put here will just kind of crumple up like a crepe pancake. I don't know why she's still friends with Ed when Ed has been so buddy-buddy with Justin Bieber. There is a lot that I don't understand about her friendship with Ed Sheeran, mostly that he has been, you know, known to be kind of like hawkish about music and that I don't think he cares at all about creating art. I think he just cares about like gaming charts and like algorithmically defying the system and trying to like get the biggest number one of all time and sell a bunch of records, which is very clear by his music because there's absolutely no soul behind it. Um, I think that that part of him appeals to a negative part of Taylor, the girl boss, capitalistic, I want to take over the world and control it, queen part. And uh, I don't know, we haven't heard a lot about their relationship as of late. She tends to keep quiet about relationships that maybe don't portray her in the best light. Like she's still friends with Lena Dunham, but do you ever see them interacting? Not really. Uh, every so often Lena will mention something about her, but Taylor knows when to keep quiet about her besties. I'm sure she's a great friend and private truly. And like, again, we don't know any of these people, so it's pure speculation. Maybe Ed Sheeran is the nicest person in the world, but that's just kind of my feeling about it the way she broke up with calvin was bad he sucked but she basically cheated on him and your point he deserved it she needed a getaway car it was a relationship she couldn't claw her way out of again i don't understand in the wake of this joe breakup why everybody is insisting that i have empathy for taylor swift's ex-boyfriends i didn't as madeline from the evolution of a snake said i didn't sign up to stand the purse the bag that dangles from her arm i'm here to stand the queen the bitch and uh she is always right in my estimation when it comes to her romantic situations i don't care i've been trained to take her side and i will always be by her side if you wish 
to feel empathy for Calvin Harris, go ahead. That is certainly, to me, an unpopular opinion. Re-recordings Midnight's tour and a film. The amount of simultaneous creative projects is bad for both her and her art. That's interesting. Um, I mean, it remains to be seen because we haven't seen a lot of those projects through to fruition as of yet. I see where you're going with this. I see what the philosophy behind that is. I'm looking very pale. So before we continue, we need to add some color back into this face. So I have two tricks that I do for definition on my face that is lightweight, easy to move around and hard to fuck up because I'm really not talented at doing makeup. So I need to make it very simple. And these are the Glossier Cloud Paints. I love these. Glossier was like made as a brand for like foolproof makeup application. So I had the shade Dusk and I used that to go in and like give myself a little hollow here. I used to use the Fenty Matchsticks in Amber, but I ran out and I will not be repurchasing because I have this instead. And then to give a little color to the tops of the cheeks, cause I'm so pale, I love Beam. This is my favorite shade. Okay, I had to actually look in a mirror to get the placement of that right, but this is what Dusk looks like on, very simple. I love it. And now I'm going to do beams. I hope I don't look like a clown. Um, someone will for sure edit me into putting clown paint on with this pose. But you know what? I accept it. You see, the cloud paints are hard to mess up. Like, they're just so sheer, I guess, that, like, you would really have to put a lot of them on. And also, I've had this one for, like, three years. <laughs> you only need the teeniest, tiniest amount. And then after that, sometimes this is actually a product that I found in Korea. Sometimes I'll just use this if I'm looking really dead one day and I'm going to the gym or something and I really look like I've passed away and I'm not, I don't have any like under eye anything on. Just to give myself a little zhuzh, I will use this. It is a lip stain, I think. Um, this is also hard to get because it's from Korea. It's called Tokobo. Uh, I got two because I knew that I probably wouldn't encounter this again and I loved it so much. I don't know what the shade name is, but I do a little on the lips because my lips are also very uh, lifeless. I tend to look dead a lot in the lip area. So <laughs> I like to do this. And then sometimes if I'm feeling really crazy, oh, look at that, insane. That truly is clown. Um, but I'll do this. And this, because it's like a lip sheen, I guess, it has a little glow too. And I always love to have as much color in the face as possible without looking like a clown. So I usually stop there, but if, for example, I was filming under a light, then I would use some powder because if I have a light on me, oh my God, girl, I'm sweating. My Born to Die video, check that out because I'm dying in that. I'm wearing a jacket and I have big softbox beating down on me for 45 minutes. And if you can tell, I like Glossier because I think it's foolproof and the packaging always sucks me in. This is the Wowder. And what I like about this is that it's not very light powdery. It kind of just lets you, oh, okay, uh, how do I do this? kind of just lets you rock. I have one makeup brush that I use for this. I've never cleaned it. Um, so I'll usually just do that. I don't have a mirror, so this might look crazy and like anywhere that I might start sweating. So my nose. And then sometimes if I want a little gloss on the lips, I have the Dior lip oil, which I really like. I have it in the clear shade. So I guess it isn't a shade at all. It's literally just a clear lip oil. I wouldn't call it a gloss because it's not sticky. It's not gloopy. Um, it's kind of like nourishing, but I love this and it tastes so good. It has like a peppermint flavor. So that's it. That is the look. That is how you get glowy Swiftologist skin. I've revealed all my secrets to you. If you like this video, um, let me know. I don't know what else I can show you in terms of my skincare. I guess I can just keep you updated in case anything changes, but like, that's pretty much it. I, th I feel like I've kind of nailed the natural on camera for a guy look. I should really title this video, how to wear makeup to make yourself look better, but not look like many MUA tutorial, because that's what I've just given you. And shall we finish with an unpopular opinion that someone literally can just, I know wrote just to activate me. Me walked so mastermind could run. Can you, can you make sense of that? I can try and see where you're coming from. I promise that you'll never find another like me, but mastermind is like a, a step way beyond that. Um, it, it wouldn't be me walked, it would be me crawled. Me dragged her lifeless body away from the crash scene. Me pulled herself out of the rubble of the Twin Towers so that Mastermind could run. Um, I really wouldn't ever describe me as having any sort of momentum because it was dead on arrival. And that's all I have to say about that. Don't forget to check out the Evolution of Snake, my Taylor Swift podcast. The Patreon is linked below. We have so much fun on there making quirky content about Taylor Swift, having analytical creative discussions. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you for another Unpopular Opinions video very soon. Goodbye, Swifties.